Hey guys, what's up? It's Isaac, and today, um, as you can see from the title, I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey as a young Christian and talk about some of the areas that I was really wrong about God and had some wrong perspectives and kind of talk through some of those things and hopefully give you some encouragement and some perspective. Maybe if you're dealing with these lies that come in or, or wrong perspectives of God. So growing up, um, I had uh, become a Christian sometime around of 10, 11. Um, that's, the, that's the point where I, I definitely knew I was a Christian. When I was like six years old, I prayed a prayer and um, maybe you can call it at that point, 11, 10, I rededicated my life to Christ. But at that point, uh, I, was, I was a Christian. And it was one of those things where, and I think to give you a little bit of a backstory on my personality, um, I'm a people pleaser. So I really like making people happy and I'll do things, I'll go out of my way to make people like me and that's really important to me. Um, just, just my personality and maybe, maybe you experienced something like that too. So I think when I became a Christian at that early age and I wouldn't have been able to identify like that people pleasing nature in me, maybe other people around me saw that. Um, but, but I think I brought that over to my relationship with God. And when I became a Christian, yeah, I, I knew, yeah, God died for me. Um, I had committed, you know, sins and, and I needed to be saved from those things. And Jesus died on the cross and he rose again from the dead. And he, for, he was able to forgive me of my sins. And now I can, you know, I'll go to heaven when I die. And so that was, I knew that. But also, I don't know, this tendency to look at God and just say and think to myself, like, how, how do you feel about me, God? Like, what thinking about how I could make God like me more and love me more in a way. And so I would try to think up things like, oh, I want to make sure I read my Bible every day and I want to, you know, pray. And so I would go go to the extent of, at that, at that point, I, I would open my Bible and I wouldn't really read because I couldn't really read because I'm dyslexic. At, at 10, 11 years old, I wasn't that good at reading. And so I would just kind of leave it open and I just, I don't know what I thought, but I thought even just having it open was giving me some sort of brownie points with God. Like God was looking down and he was like, yeah, okay, I, I like you, Isaac, you know? And this kind of feeling, and not, not that there's anything wrong with reading your Bible or praying or anything like that, obviously, but it's all about the heart behind it. And that's what I want to get into. But um, I think this kind of feeling like I needed to earn God's love or... Uh, make God proud of me, uh, worked in tandem with this overall feeling like God didn't like me, like um, God didn't, wasn't proud of me, that he was disappointed in me, that I was a failure, that I, um, that I was really nothing. So in counter to that, in counter to that overall feeling, I, I really worked hard at trying to get God to like me and love me in a way. I couldn't have put it into words like that then, but that was a lot of my relationship with God at that age. And for me, I was raised in a Christian household and, and the gospel was talked about. Um, God was talked about. We would read the Bible together. And from an early age, I remember hearing a lot about, hey, God, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. But I can just, just thinking back, I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what that meant. I guess in some ways that I thought, look, God coming to die for me, that was nice of him, but now it's my job to make him love me. He did this for me. Now I have to come back with, you know, serving him and honoring him in order for him to really like me and accept me. Um, it was like an obligation in a way, a duty that because now God saved me, now I have to impress God and make God proud of me. I think it's easy to get lost, especially when you've grown up in a Christian household or Christian culture, to let some of these things that, like, God loves you and just let them, I don't know, just become words and not really understand what they truly mean and the implications they have on your life. Um, because even now, to this day, in my 20s, I'm still thinking about the implications that God does love me. And I think it really wasn't until, and I'm still learning to this day, but until I was 17, I'm thinking 17, 18, when I, I had a moment where 
um, the speaker was talking about when he truly understood that God loved him, despite all his mistakes, despite all the things where, where he had been selfish or he'd gone wrong or all the things that had happened in his life, God loved him. And for me, I have a hard time with that. I have a hard time really, if somebody says they love me, I have a hard time believing that because I feel like I need to prove it to them. Until I feel like I've sufficiently proven myself to be lovable, then I can't believe somebody who says they love me or accept me. Um, if I feel like, for me, it's like I need to be really awesome, a really awesome person, and then you can love me. But the amazing thing about God and what I learned throughout my teen years, and it was a long process, is that the amazing thing about God and the amazing thing about, you know, people in our lives or close family or friends, if you're fortunate enough to have those people in your life that love you um, despite the things that you do, that despite the fact that, look, yeah, you do make mistakes. And despite the fact that, look, you can't be perfect. And... And God says, you know, come, come to me, my child. I think of the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son, and, and we've gone off and we've done what we wanted to do. And, you know, when he comes back, when the prodigal son comes back, the father accepts him. He doesn't pass judgment. He doesn't scold him. He celebrates. And he celebrates him. He celebrates him and he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve to be forgiven. He doesn't deserve, he deserves to work. And for me, when I read that story and when I did read that story, it, it made more sense to me when the son would come back, he would work for the father to earn that, to earn that forgiveness because he did all that stuff. Because he's a, he, he wasted the money. Of course he's going to come back and he's going to work for the Father to earn that, that forgiveness, that, that spot in his house to be loved by the Father again. But he wasn't. He was accepted back. He was accepted back based on the mercy and the grace of the Father. And for me, there's not a day that goes by that that is not powerful to me that's not the, there's not a day that goes by that that doesn't speak that doesn't speak into my soul where I can see God saying look I know I know what you've done in your life but I want you I want you it's not like he's accepting you out of obligation no he chose you he chose you and for me, I was wrong about God. I thought he just wanted what I could offer him. I thought I needed to earn his love and make him proud of me. But God already loves me and accepts me. And that's something that I still struggle with. Because we can look around on this earth for so much you know, we can look for that acceptance and love from so many places because we crave it. That's where our hearts are at. And for some of us, that's a real, the biggest piece of our life. Some, uh, maybe some others, is, it, it might not be as front and center. But for me, that love and acceptance, that was so, that was so at core to who I am. And even now I, I can identify that in my life, being able to see that I can be fully known that God can know everything about me, that God can know every single place I've made a mistake, that he can see the places where I fall short. And yet, he loves me. If I were to tell you about a person like that, you would say, wow, what a person, but you would know I wasn't telling the whole story because no person can love perfectly like that. Nobody can be known fully and yet love perfectly. But God can 
know us and he does know us and we can know him and he can love us and he does love us fully god has saved us and he accepts us and he loves us that is who god is that's his character he is merciful he is gracious and yes he is just and that's the beauty of the gospel is the fact that he has yes he has saved us from our sins but he's not left us there and he's not angrily scolded us but he's accepted us and adopted us as children children of god and now we can step into that new identity 